Man, I'm so excited to show you guys what's down there. So I'm up here north of San Francisco where I'm from in Mendocino with my buddy Andrew and Daniel. And the plan is to go spear fishing. We're gonna be targeting rockfish, scallops, and sea urchin. Abalone season is closed and it's going to be closed for the entire 2018. So that's off the table. But I've never shot a rockfish before. The water is crystal clear. You can literally see down 10 feet from on top here. So when we're in the water, I know visibility is going to be at least 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet. Make sure if you try to do this on your own, be safe about it. Don't just go out just because you saw this video. Do some research. A lot of people die free diving every year. So you got to be careful about your safety. That's the number one thing. Anyway, whatever we catch, I'll tell you the regulations then. But that's the plan. Rockfish, scallops, and sea urchin for this trip. It's Thursday now, we'll be here until Saturday, so we got the entire day tomorrow to fish. It's two o'clock right now, so we gotta get over to the dive shop, and then we can get a couple hours of diving in right now, so that's where we're headed, up to Fort Bragg. All right, in Mendocino, and we're stopping at Subsurface Progression. If you guys ever come up here and you wanna go free diving, this is the spot to rent your gear. They got kayaks for rent, they got all the dive gear for rent, they got wetsuits, flow tubes, everything you need, for a good price and if you have some of the gear like if you have a weight belt or if you have fins or if you have a wetsuit and you only need some booties or a mask and snorkel they'll rent to you in in items in different pieces so you can save some money that way all right sun's setting probably got like another hour and a half of sunlight so we're just finishing up getting suited up i'm gonna go dive a little bit today kind of just testing the waters today and then tomorrow is the big day we got a mile hike and then we got two spots we're going to try to hit. This spot supposedly has some lingcod, and the other spot does too. You guys good? When you go down, tilt your head straight down and then do a little kick and then go straight down. And then also, right after you take your last breath, take your snorkel out so you don't have pressure forcing water into your mouth. So there's Linka that's about to come on screen, but as I was diving, it was really hard for me to judge if it was the legal size of 22 inches. So if there are any experienced spear fishermen out there who have seen the fish from this perspective, please tell me, would you have shot this fish? Does that look like a legal keeper to you? There's another perspective coming up on the next clip. And also later in this video, there's a cabazon that was on top of the rocks that I also didn't shoot because I thought it was close to 15 inches. So please tell me, would you have shot these fish? Hey, big ling cod right here. It's close to legal. I didn't want to shoot it. There's a couple, there's a couple of nice fish down there.
You okay, Daniel? Your mask is hella foggy. Where was it? Did you did you mark this spot? Where was it? Well, that did not go as planned, really. It was a lot more murky in the front than we thought it was going to be, so we had to go out like 500 yards before it got clear. And this fish that I shot, my first rockfish at least, it's like a lot smaller than it looked underwater. And there was a big lingcod right in front of me, but I didn't want to shoot it because I wasn't for sure it was legal size they need to be 22 inches and when you're underwater everything looks a lot bigger so we're gonna give it a, another try tomorrow and see if we can catch catch something shoot something big enough to cook maybe look inside the crevices and try to find some scallops too we'll see how that goes tomorrow So this is day two of the dive trip. Hopefully today goes a little bit more successful. We all just got up, so we're gonna go have a little bit of breakfast right now and then suit up with our cold wetsuits, shiver ourselves into the water and warm up and hopefully catch one of these, a lingcod, some, some rockfish, hopefully pry off some scallops. Yesterday, Daniel lost his GoPro. So we're going to dive one spot today and when low tide comes, <coughs> we might go to the other spot where he lost it and try to dive down and get it. But if we don't find it, maybe you guys can head over to Daniel's channel and give him your condolences for the GoPro. Another GoPro lost at sea. So I guess we should go over some safety stuff real quick. Always important to dive with somebody else so they can save you just in case you black out or something bad happens. Also for me, my, you know, six seven times diving so far what i can say is the most important thing for me to have a good productive successful day diving is to be weighted right so i've got 18 pounds of weight i weigh 157 pounds and 18 pounds is just right for me i stay buoyant when i go down when i'm in the water and i dive down and it's not too difficult to get down to where i need to Andrew is wearing 18 pounds yesterday. He wore that yesterday, but he was a little it was a little too too It wasn't enough weight. So today he's gonna add two pounds and see how that goes Daniel also had 18 pounds. He's gonna add one pound see how that goes. So That being weighted right and being able to clear your Ears so you don't have a ruptured eardrum when you go down That's probably the second most important thing because only when you get down six feet You'll start to feel pressure in your ears and you have to clear your ears constantly every second or two seconds as you go deeper and deeper and how you do that you just hold your nose and blow out till your ears pop so I feel like those are the two most important things once you get comfortable in all the safety aspects of diving if you get those under control then you'll have a very successful day
that didn't really go as planned again. I shot that kelp greenling, but on my bag there's a big hole. So whatever I shot fell out. I saw that cab and I didn't know if it was a legal size or not, so I didn't want to shoot it. Gotta try the surgeon. Alright, break it in half. Uh this one looks like stunt, dude. Yeah. Like Oh, it's, 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 it's like snot. Look at it, dude. Have you had this before? One time in my life. One time. All right, let's let's open another one. See if uh, if it's a lot more brighter, brighter color. All right. I never opened one before. So yeah, you just hold it from the bottom, or or like that, whatever way, and then just smack it in the middle. Okay. Oh, that one looks good. A lot of water, dude. That's why it's so heavy. <laughs> it looks gross, dude. It looks gross, but it's like, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like this is like the best of the best. I don't know, like, if you want uni, I think this is how it's supposed to look. All right, so oh. let me rinse this in the ocean. Wait, where's my two manhole? <laughs> So this is the uni right there. Andrew's had this one time in his life, so here, take one, take a little piece, or whatever. Take a little bit, take a little bit. Oh, this one's kind of bitter. It's like rubber, dude. Oh my god, tastes like fresh boot. <laughs> fresh boot? Like you open a box of boots and it smells like it's leather. That's gross, dude. Yeah, that was pretty bad. You want to drink some water? <laughs> Disgusting. <dude. laughs> well, this one is like, I don't know, they say the bright, more yellow, golden ones are better, and they're really sweet. This one is really, really bitter. Disgusting. This is white stuff, dude. <laughs> I don't know, in my experience, these redder, pinker ones, they have a lot better roll. So, you down to try one more? Down. Skeptical, though. Okay. Crack this one open. It is you know, nice and yellow. So if you haven't seen the other sea urchin catch and cook video that I did before, that's the, its teeth right here on the bottom. It's full of water. And in each sea urchin, there's five of these at the edible portion. Better than the last one. Way better. Oh, it's better. Still has a little. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Not as strong though. Mm, not as strong, but still gross. Oh man. Maybe you need like soy sauce, rice, some. That one wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. So, you want to try one more? Uni? Yeah. No. <laughs> Alright. No. <laughs> we are out here fishing no luck at diving so got to resort to this little bit of fishing got the rod here gonna do some swim baits we are actually at the spot that we dove yesterday where i saw that lingcod and where daniel lost his gopro so that spot is within casting distance. So we know there's a couple black rockfish there. There's a couple kelp greenling right down that hole. So Daniel and Andrew are tossing out some bait, high-low rigs with some shrimp, and I'm going to be throwing some swim baits. So, oh, it looks not doesn't look too bad out here. Check that out. That's where those fish were. So let's get rigged up and do this fishing thing. I've been on some cliffs like this that look safe like this, and they just cut out underneath. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I got one. Got one. A link car, baby. Let's go. I'd let it swing out though one time. Uh. 
Ah, dude is rubbing on the rocks too. Oh no. Hell yeah. Go, baby. That's a keeper thing. Oh, man. That's what's up. That's a keeper right there. Oh, so, nice blue color, dude. He bit on both of them. Hell yeah. That was my third cast. Yeah, dude, look at the color on that. I don't have a measuring tape, but that's for sure 22. Actually, we do have one in the back, but yeah, dude, look at the blue meat. Dude, that was the third cast. We're about to get some more. There we are. There we are. There we are. Hell yeah. Pulling them up over the rocks too. Got to make sure that the, you know, the line doesn't get too... I mean, the line's going to be tight, of course, if you're pulling them over the rocks. So you don't, don't want it to rub. If you can, just swing it out a little bit. Reel it in a little bit. Comes back. Swing it out a little bit. Reel it in a little bit. So. One link out. Man, do better pole fishing than spear fishing. So I went pretty light for uh, for rock fishing like this. I only used 20 pound tests, one ounce weight, so I could bounce it along the bottom. And I just try, tied pretty much a high-low rig with a size two watt hook. That's what I got this black Kitek on, and then a size two hook with this white swimming minnow. And it bit on the black Kitek. It's really nice to fish on the cliffs like this because you can cast out really far and then bounce it up and down. And then if any fish see you on that entire retrieve, they'll follow it. And then you have that entire chance for the fish to commit to biting. Oh, I got a hit just now. Oh, it might be on there. Yep. Oh. Got him. Oh, <laughs> oh, another ling, baby. I don't know. Probably. It's swimming towards me. I, don't, I can't see my line. What is that right there? That's another ling. Small one, though. Oh, Andrew, oh. Let's go, baby. Another one. Caught another one. On that black Kitek. Gotta love these Kiteks. And the hooked the hook ratio is so good because there's an open hook. It's not like a weedless thing. Look how I hooked him too. Right on the edge of the lip, bringing him up the cliff like that. He's a little short, so we're gonna throw this one back. <laughs> so yeah, I changed it up. It was getting really dark. So I got one of those black Kitex on right now still. And I changed the other one up to a really small Bobby Garland crappie jig and caught this black rockfish on the swim bait. Look how small this crappie jig is. I bought this crappie jig and I was trying to use it on a, uh, a like a drop shot for kelp greenling, but this is the crappie jig right here. Really high in the water column too. Nice black rockfish, but I'll throw them back. Caught two lings, one black, a little crappie jig.